We spend so much of our lives searching for happiness. All the movies encourage you to find what makes you happy, find your happily ever after. Once you achieve this one thing, you can finally be happy. Once you find the perfect guy or get the perfect job or get a bunch of money, you'll finally be happy. That's what they make us think life is about, trying to find that one thing that will make you happy. And I remember growing up just thinking, I have so much and I've done so much, but I'm just not happy. I just remember feeling so empty on the inside, thinking, is this it? Is this is this how my story is gonna go? Is this how my life is gonna be? Is this what it's gonna feel like for the rest of my life? Is this living? Am I finally happy? Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. We spend so much of our lives searching for happiness. We think that we will find happiness in other people, in success, or even in wealth. We can put our everything into becoming successful. Surrounding ourselves with people who don't know or care about us. Climbing our way to the top of the ladder of a career path that we don't even have an interest in. Buying big homes and filling them with things that we don't need. Whatever it takes to become what society tells us is successful and what society tells us will make us happy but at the end of the day we'll still be left feeling empty and searching for something that money cannot buy us Zacchaeus he had everything he could ever want he had money he had a successful career he had the respect and the fear of all these people because he was the successful tax collector who could essentially make your life awful if you made him mad. So he had everything that people tell us will make you happy. He's that big guy walking around the office with the expensive suits and the briefcase always talking on the phone 
with a huge house filled with nothing but air. Yet, despite all of it, Zacchaeus was still unfulfilled. There was still a part of him that was empty and searching for purpose, searching for meaning, searching for happiness. Zacchaeus worked his whole life to become this successful man. And I bet you at the end of the day, he would go home and he would look at himself. I don't know if they had mirrors back then, I doubt it, but I'm sure he would have looked at himself and said, are you happy now? You finally have everything that you could ever want. In modern times, it would sound like this. You've got the house, you've got the career, you've got the wife, you've got the kids. You've got money and power and success. You are that guy that everybody wants to be. So are you happy now? Are you finally happy? Do you finally feel fulfilled? Do you finally feel like you have attained your purpose? Verse 15 says, So he said to them, You are the ones who declare yourselves just and upright in the sight of men. But God knows your hearts, your thoughts, your desires, your secrets. For that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. Like Zacchaeus and the Pharisees in verse 15, we can value success and money more than we value God. Success becomes our God. Money and wealth becomes our God. We focus so much on attaining success and attaining wealth that we forget about our relationship with God. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, For the love of money, that is, the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically, is a root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. Sometimes we don't realize that on our path toward money and success, we forget about God and we get off track with Him and gaining a good relationship with Him. We become so focused on our need for success that we forget about our need for God. Growing up, and especially growing up black and as a woman, we're kind of taught that we're at the bottom of, of the totem pole because not only am I black, not only am I colored, but I'm also a woman. So, a lot of the time, we're taught that we need to overcompensate for that by becoming extremely successful. And believe me, there's nothing wrong with that. But, a lot of the time, that means that society and the world around us pressures every black woman to want to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a pharmacist, or something where you have to make over six figures a year. I was taught that that was what would make you happy, is being successful, proving to people that just because I'm black and just because I'm a woman, that doesn't mean that I can't be successful. And yes, that is a valuable lesson to learn, but success comes in many different shades and many different colors. You don't have to be a doctor to be successful. You don't have to be a lawyer to be successful. You don't have to make over six figures to be successful. I wanted so badly to be happy that I would have done anything to be successful because that was what I thought made you happy. By middle school, I had laid out my entire life plan. I was gonna become a therapist. I was gonna get my doctorate in psychology. I was gonna make over six figures a year and nothing else mattered to me. I worked myself so hard. I pushed myself so hard and I'm proud of that. 
but I ended up hating school. I dreaded it. I used to, when I first started going to school, I loved waking up in the morning and getting all of my school supplies and going to school and I, I would just enjoy it so much because I loved learning. I loved, I loved social studies. I loved music class. I loved science. I loved those things. But eventually I came to dread them. It wasn't until I was a senior in high school that I was able to admit to myself that I didn't even want to be a psychologist. I just thought that if I was a doctor and I made a lot of money that I could be happy. I thought that that would finally make me happy and fill that empty space within myself. I thought that that would make me love myself and make other people love me too. I thought that success meant happiness. I just wanted to be happy. And what made me happy was writing. What made me happy was singing and doing laundry. <laughs> my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband. What made me happy was God and pursuing a relationship with him. And finally being able to admit that to myself, to everyone around me, that was when I finally felt free. It always seemed like if I didn't become successful, then I couldn't be happy. That I was less of a person, less of a woman. It always seemed like if I didn't become that doctor, or become that lawyer, or go to school for 10 years and not get married until I'm 45. <laughs> if I didn't follow that path, then I wouldn't be happy. But the day that I decided that I was not going to live a life that I dreaded, the day that I decided that I was not going to live my life in bondage, the day that I decided that I was not going to waste my life chasing a career that I didn't even want, that was the day that I finally felt free. That was the day that I finally started to learn what happiness was. But it was deeper than that. I didn't just want to be happy anymore. I have been going to church. I have been learning about God. I have been looking at all of these people around me who had this great relationship with God. And what I saw in their faces, it was deeper than happiness. It was joy. I didn't understand why they were so happy. I didn't understand why they were so joyful. Until that day when I freed myself from societal expectations and from my own expectations. I learned that it wasn't happiness that I wanted. It was joy, godly joy. Happiness, I finally learned, is just a feeling. It lasts for a moment. It's fleeting. Something good happens and you feel happy. But then something bad happens and you feel sad. It's a feeling. But joy, joy is deeper than that. Joy is beneath your feelings. And when it's godly joy, it is a gift from God and nothing can take it away. Nothing. I have been through so much in my life since that day, but it was that day that I decided I was going to claim my joy. I decided that I was going to accept the gift of joy that God was offering me. And ever since then, despite everything that's happened to me, Nothing has been able to take that away. I'm still able to get up in the morning smiling, thanking God for life. Even if I'm living in a dump, even if somebody makes me mad, I'm still joyful It's because that's what's in me. That's what God has given me. Life isn't about finding that one thing that's gonna make you happy. It's finding that one God that is going to bring you joy. And I found him. And I want you to find him too. I want you to look around. Look at everything that you have. Your car, your home, the food in your fridge, everything that you feel makes you happy. I want you to look around at it. I want you to go and look in the mirror and I want you to ask yourself, are you happy now? Now that you've gotten the job that you dreamed of, now that you finally found the man of your dreams, now that you finally reached that success that you have been working so hard for for your whole life. Are you happy now? Luke chapter 12 verse 15 says, Watch out 
and guard yourselves against every form of greed. For not even when one has an overflowing abundance does his life consist of, nor is it derived from his possessions. Your life, your joy, it has nothing to do with what you have. It is deeper than that. Your joy has everything to do with your relationship with God. See, Zacchaeus gained the success and the wealth, but he didn't gain the happiness. He didn't gain the joy. Eventually, Zacchaeus had to stand in the middle of that house with all of his things, all of his success and all of his wealth around him. And he had to ask himself, are you happy now? And when he realized that he wasn't, he went out and he decided to do something about it. Zacchaeus was so stuck in the middle of all of his stuff that he needed a change. So he went out and found the guy who was going around giving everybody change. The guy who was changing lives, changing mindsets. The guy who could transform the heart of a harlot. The guy who could save the blind and the deaf and the lepers. He went out and he found that guy that everybody was talking about. And he realized that what Jesus was offering, it was worth more than anything that money could buy. You can't buy forgiveness or grace or eternal life. You can't buy happiness or peace or joy. You can't buy salvation because it is a gift from God. One that he doesn't give us because we deserve it. He gives it to us out of the love in his heart that is pouring out for each and every one of us. I know you may have been out there searching for happiness. You may have looked all over. You may have been looking for happiness in places that were full of despair. I know that you're looking for something that's different than everything that you've already tried. You're looking for something that's different from everything that you already have. You're looking for that thing that's finally going to make you happy. But what Jesus is offering is the thing that's finally going to give you joy. He's offering change. He's offering salvation. He did it for me and he can do it for you. All you have to do is accept the gift. Accept the gift of joy. Accept the gift of peace. Accept the gift of salvation. I spent so much of my life held captive by what I thought was success and what I thought was happiness. And it wasn't until I finally was able to find freedom that I was finally able to find joy. And it was the same thing for Zacchaeus. It wasn't until he finally let go of everything that he'd taken from other people. He finally gave the money back and he gave his life over to Christ and he was finally able to get that freedom. He was finally able to get that joy. He was finally able to find what he had been looking for. And you can do the same thing. Stop searching for happiness. Stop searching for something that God is already trying to give to you. Because you could get the money and the cars and the houses but at the end of the day, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you ask the question, are you happy now? What is your answer going to be?